All right, let's do a little bit of work on tan today. So the one that people don't normally like. Here we go. So the function tangent. To sketch a graph of tan, the thing you want to remember always is that the period is not like sine and cos. The period for sine and cos is 2 pi, the period for tan is pi. And you always have asymptotes, if there's no shift, at pi on 2 and minus pi on 2. So if you mark those in, you can see the period between those is pi. So you um, can then draw in your graph and it approaches negative infinity, comes up to zero and looks like that. And then that just repeats as many times as you want. So if I wanted 3 pi on 2, pi would be halfway between those. You could mark in an asymptote at 3 pi on 2 and then 5 pi on 2 and I might stop this at 2 pi. So if we drew in that, it would look like that and like that. Okay. So there's your y and there's your theta and this is y equals tan theta. Now you can see below they've made a table of values to do theirs um, and then drawn it in very professionally looking isn't it. Um, have a look at the two scales just on the x-axis one thing to point out here. Um, this scale here is obviously in radians and the scale below is in numbers. So just think about like this point here. We know pi is 3.14 and you can see how the x-intercept is just a little bit after 3. So you can, you can put them just straight in numbers if you like. Um, what are the observations down in this little bit here? So the observations are that the graph repeats itself every pi units. In other words, the period is pi. The range is from um, negative infinity to positive infinity, so real. And you've got asymptotes at every pi on 2. And that's just their way of being able to write that. The x-intercepts, of course, of course, occur um, at every multiple of pi. So they're the main bits. All right, let's get into doing some graphs of them. So y equals 3 tan 2x. Now, you don't have an amplitude like you do um, with the sine and cos graph. This is really just um, how far the graph is dilated from the x-axis. So that's a dilation of factor 3. Dilation of factor 3 from the x-axis. So in other words, it makes it a bit steeper. And this is the more important one. So the period is not um, 2 pi on n, it's pi on n. So in this case, it's pi on 2. So what does that do to the graph? So I'll just draw in here. Now, normally the, um, the asymptotes are drawn in at minus pi on 2 and pi on 2. But they want us to draw from minus pi. If you look at their domain, it's minus pi to pi. So normally I'd draw in minus pi on 2 and pi on 2, but because the period's only pi on 2, this value here, remember that's a dilation by factor one half, by factor of a half from the y-axis. So if we dilate the asymptotes, which were normally at pi on 2, by half, they'll now be at pi on 4 and minus pi on 4. So we can mark in those asymptotes. We know that the next the because the period is pi on 2 the next asymptote will be at 3 pi on 4 and of course minus 3 pi on 4 so we can 
draw this graph in nicely. What colour will I choose? Black for a change. Now the three just makes it steeper. So it's just coming in a bit steeper. There we go. And this bit will be the repeat there. And there we go. <coughs> Tidy that up with a um, with a Y and a X. The difference with the next one, we'll have a look again in part B. There's a graph. We want it between minus pi and pi. Uh, choose some the right pen there, minus pi and pi. Now this time it's dilated by a third from the y-axis. So the asymptotes which would have been at pi on 2 and minus pi on 2 will become a third of those. So that will be equal to pi on 6. So your first asymptote will be at pi on 6. And minus pi on 6. Should write x equals, shouldn't I? So there's your first bit of your tan graph. Um, actually, it's a negative tan graph, so I've drawn that from the wrong side. So if it's negative, it reflects in the x-axis. So it'll go this way instead. Now, what was the period? Have a look at the period. The period is pi on 3, not 2 pi on 3, but pi on 3. So pi on 3 is 2 pi on 6. So your next asymptote will occur at 2 pi on 6 later. So pi on 6 plus 2 pi on 6 is pi on 2. <coughs> or 3 pi on 6. The next one is 2 pi on 6 later again, so that'll be 5 pi on 6. And of course the same thing's going to happen in the negatives. There we go, put those in there. X equals minus pi on 2. X equals minus 5 pi minus 5 pi on 6. And we can draw those in. Just doing a nice quick little sketch here. Now, what about the um, the x-intercepts there? So they're going to be halfway between um, between the values of the asymptotes. So pi on six and pi on two. So that's one pi on six, three pi on six. So that's two pi on six. So that will be pi on 3 and then 2 pi on 3 and so obviously the same in the uh, in the negatives so minus pi on 3 and minus 2 pi on 3 and we can draw in the rest of this graph because remember we have to draw in it up to pi I think that looks like that and as I said, don't forget the negative. That's a reflection in the x-axis. Um, and it's a dilation by factor 2 from the um, x-axis, so it just makes it a little bit steeper than it normally would have. All right, <coughs> sort of moving on, trying to be as quick as I can. Um, when you do these ones, y equals 3 tan, take the 2 out as a common factor, x minus pi on 6. So it's a normal graph, 
it's like 3 tan 2x. I don't think we did 3 tan 2x, no we didn't. So it's like 3 tan 2x, but it has been shifted pi on 6 to the right. So let's have a look at that. So if I did this one, and this one only wants you to sketch between pi on 6 and 13 pi on 6. And that's because it has been shifted pi on 6 to the right. So work out where your asymptotes would be first of all. So because the period is pi on n, so it's pi on 2, the asymptotes will happen at halfway between that. So your first asymptote would have been at pi on 4. So your asymptote would have been would have been pi on would have been pi on four without a shift. And minus pi on four. So make do it like that. But now we shift them, but now they're shifted pi on 6. So now shifted right pi on 6. So um, minus pi on 4 plus pi on 6. So you've got minus, if you put them both on 12, minus 3 pi on 12 plus 2 pi on 12 would be minus pi on 12. Now we're not going to use this one because it's out of the domain, but it sort of can help you a little bit. So that's minus pi on 12. Okay. So your next asymptote would have been pi on 4 plus pi on 6. So that would make that um, 3 pi on 12 plus 2 pi on 12 is 5 pi on 12. So your next one's at 5 pi on 12. So you can see that the because the period's pi on 2, your next asymptote will occur at um, half a pi later. So half a pi is 6 pi on 12, and 5 pi on 12 plus 6 pi on 12 is 11 pi on 12. So that's 11 pi on 12 there, x equals, x equals. So what's halfway between that? Well, 5 pi on 12 plus 3 pi on 12 is 8 pi on 12. So that there is 8 pi on 12, which is 2 pi on 3. And if we'd subtracted um, 3 pi on 12, so we would have got 2 pi on 12, which is pi on 6. Oops. So that would be pi on 6. Your next asymptote would occur at 14 pi on 12. Our next, next x intercept, sorry, would occur at 11 pi on 12 plus 3 pi on 12 is 14 pi on 12, which is, what's that, 7 pi on 6. Okay, um, so your next asymptote is 6 pi on 12, is it 17 pi on 12? Okay, uh, if you add 3 pi you'll get uh, 20 pi on 12, which is 5 pi on 6, I think, yeah. That's probably enough that I, I've... I've done there now. We're, we're meant to do more cycles than this in the graph, but um, I'm sort of running out of room here. So if I was drawing this in as a normal tan graph, I'm going to do it like this. This is dotted here. That's where it's coming up to. Didn't draw that very well. I might um, try that again, I think. So it's coming in like this more around it, now it's flattening and now it's going up like that. That's better. There we go, looking nicer. All right, 
So I've, I've drawn in some of the periods there. I didn't give myself enough room to draw the whole domain, but um, that'll certainly give me what I need or what you, what you need. Now, <clears throat> how do we actually now do solutions for these type? Because they don't always go nicely through the axes. So let's do some solutions for these. Solve the equation 3 tan x equals root 3. So tan 2x equals root 3 on 2. Remember that's one of your special triangles. 2, 1, root 3. We want the opposite to be root 3 because tan is opposite over adjacent. So we want the opposite to be root 3. Um, and the um, it's not root 3 on 2, it's root 3 on 3. I'm wondering why that didn't work. Um, root 3 on 3 <coughs> is the same as, well, root 3 goes into root 3 once and root 3 goes into root 3, root 3. So um, we want the opposite to be 1 because it's opposite over adjacent and we want the adjacent to be root 3. So we're talking about this angle here. That makes the opposite 1, the adjacent root 3. So tan to the minus 1 of 1 on root 3 equals pi on 6. So tan 2x equals pi on 6 is your first angle. And of course, where else is tan positive? Tan is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. So that's pi on 6, um, first and third quadrants. I hope you picked up on that when I said it. First and third quadrants. So tan in the third quadrant is 7 pi on 6. Now, we've actually got tan of 2x. And we know x was between 0 and 2 pi, so 2x is between, double it, 0 and 4 pi. So we'll need to add two more solutions. So we need to go around the unit circle once. So if we add 2 pi, that's 12 pi on 6, so plus 1 pi on 6 is 13 pi on 6. And if we add 2 pi to this one, plus another 12 pi on 6 makes 19 pi on 6. So um, I should have had there, I like that. Not quite happy with my notations here. This should have just been tan. Oh, this should have just been 2x because I've done the tan to the minus 1. So x is equal to pi on 12, 7 pi on 12, 13 pi on 12, and 19 pi on 12. There we go. Try this one here. <coughs> Moving on. Try to see if I can do my not notation a little bit better. So we've got tan of a half x minus pi on 4 equals minus 1. So I've got a half x minus pi on 4 equals tan to the minus 1 of minus 1. Special triangle, 1, 1, root 2. So that angle is pi on 4. Tan to the minus 1 of 1, because it's opposite over adjacent, equals pi on 4. But we want the negatives of these because it's negative 1. So tan is negative what quadrants? So tan is negative in the second and fourth. Second and C-A-S-T, second and third. C A S T. So tan is positive, sorry. Fix that up there. 
So tan is negative in the second and fourth. All right. So tan is negative in the second and fourth. So in the second, we've got pi minus pi on four. So we've got um, three pi on four. And in the fourth, we've got two pi minus pi on four, which is seven pi on four. So we've got a half x minus pi on four equals three pi on four and seven pi on four. They're your main angles. <coughs> And now we've got to get right up to 2 pi. So um, we're going to need to add a few more um, values than this. Now, <clears throat> you can either add your values at this stage or we can add, add them right at the end. And I'm going to do these ones right at the end. And what we have to just work out, though, is what our period is. So our period here, period, is 2 pi on n and the n value is a half so 2 pi on n is 4 pi so um, because our period is 4 pi we'll proceed as follows so x minus pi on 4 equals so if I multiply these by 2 this will become 3 pi on 2 and 7 pi on 2 Uh, yep, seven pi on two. Now, you can see here that when we do when we add pi on four to this, three pi on two is six pi on four. Six pi on four plus one pi on four is seven pi on four. Um, seven pi on two is fourteen pi on four. If you add 1 pi to that, that's 15 pi on 4. Now, you can see this is clearly out of the domain. This is bigger than 2, to 2 pi, so this is out of the domain. But if we just subtract one period from, from this answer, so minus 1 period, that will give us our the previous answer that we should have got. So the period we've already worked out is 4 pi, so that's 16 pi on 4. So 15 pi on 4 minus 16 pi on 4 is minus pi on 4. And notice this one's 7 pi on 4. Now what if we'd subtracted one period from that? Well that would have given us 7 minus 16 is minus 9 pi on 4 which is minus two and a bit pi. So that would have been out of the domain at the lower end. So the only values you've got are minus pi on four and seven pi on four. So um, it sort of, you know, tests your trigability there and that you can do all the bits that you meant to. Um, the difference with example 32, and I won't go through that, I'll just sort of start at y equals three tan two x minus pi on 6, so take the common factor out. Now the difference with, with this one is obviously you would be able to work out the x-intercepts and you'd have to solve that equation just like we have in the one above to work out those x-intercepts when you sketched it. Um, you can do that on the calculator just using your solve for x but Whenever you use a trig, one thing to watch, whenever you use trig on the calculator, unless you specify the domain, and remember you get that vertical line, and that's meant to be a different color pen to that, you get that vertical line there from the control equals on your calculator. Unless you specify the domain, you'll get hundreds of answers. You'll get a sort of, yeah, so make sure you specify the domain to get your actual answers out. All right, um, the last little type is, on the same axis, sketch the graph of sine x and cos x, and then find where they intersect. Well, the sketch is nice and easy. Two pi, pi, 
pi on 2, 3 pi on 2. Um, sine graph starts in the middle, goes up. The amplitude was just 1. It looks like that. Do the same for cos. The only difference is it starts at the top and goes down. And then it says find the points of intersection. Okay, so I think you should be able to see that they're going to be at um, here, which is going to be pi on 4, and here, which is going to be 5 pi on 4. Now, how do you actually get that? Well, sine x is equal to cos x, so make the graphs equal to each other at their intersection. Now, if you divide both sides by cos x, you'll get sine x on cos x equals 1, and sine x on cos x is tan x. So x equals tan to the minus 1 of 1. Special triangle, 1, 1, root 2, pi on 4. So... Um, x is equal to pi on 4. Now, where is tan positive? Tan is positive in the first and third. So you've got pi on 4 for the first, and you've got pi plus pi on 4, which is 5 pi on 4. So x is pi on 4, and y is 5 pi on 4. Um, that's not giving the whole coordinate though, so make sure you give the whole coordinate. So then we've got the y values. So you can just go sine of, so y will be equal to sine of either pi on four, or sine of pi on four, or cos of pi on four, it won't matter, equals one on root two. Again, just use your triangle. And um, when you do the five pi on four, y of five pi on four, is equal to minus 1 on root 2 because sine and cos are both negative in the four, in the third quadrant so your intersection points here this one there is 5 pi on 4 minus 1 on root 2 no need to rationalize the denominator and pi on 4 1 on root 2 getting there What's the difference when we have it for sine of 2x? Do the same thing. So you'll have sine 2x equals cos 2x. So you'll have tan 2x equals 1. So you're just dividing both sides by cos 2x. So 2x equals tan to the minus 1 of 1. So 2x equals... Now we've done this a few times, so I'm not going to bother pi on 4 and 5 pi on 4, so exactly the same as the last example. But remember, because we're doing 2x, we need to go between 0 and 4 pi, so we double the domain. So we need to add um, 2 pi by going around the unit circle once. So add uh, 8 pi on 4, that makes a 9 pi on 4. Add 2 pi to that one there, makes that uh, 13 pi on 4. And then, of course, just divide by 2. So that becomes x is pi on 8, 5 pi on 8, 9 pi on 8, and 13 pi on 8. And that will most certainly let you do all the um, questions for 10 in 6J. So have fun. Bye.